Let's not waste any more time. Let's say hello to the reigning defending UFC light heavyweight champion, Johnny Bones Jones. Look at him. Wow, John, you're looking great with the suit and everything. I love it. You know what I'm saying? I had to clean it up just a little bit. How you I, feeling? I'm feeling great, John. Thank you for doing this. I know you just landed from New Mexico, and so you're probably a little tired. I really appreciate your time here today. Yeah, I'm just waking up, but I'm ready for you. All right, Thank my you. man. Thanks for being the show. It's, it's always great to talk to you. I have to ask first because it made some headlines just a couple of days ago. You wrote this very long and impassioned um, you know, post on your Instagram about managers and trying to you know, give some advice to young fighters. What prompted that? And could you tell us you know, who you were talking about, if possible? Yeah, it, I wasn't talking about any manager in particular. I was just talking about uh, just all managers. Um, I, had a, I had a teammate uh, talk to me about you know, how much he was paying his manager. And uh, I almost forgot that people out there were paying, you know, 25 percent and stuff like that. I, I asked the I asked the guy what his manager was doing, uh, was doing for him, and he said nothing really. You know, he didn't have any sponsors, and the last thing his manager had done for him was sitting in on the room and help him negotiate his UFC contract. And I just thought, I just thought it was just such a huge percentage for a guy who wasn't working uh, really hard for his athlete. So I just wanted to remind, um, I just wanted to tell fighters out there that you know. I didn't, I didn't find it normal to pay that type of money. Um, and I, I thought that guys who do deserve that type of money are guys who are really out there going to bat for these guys and taking care of these guys in every aspect of their life, not just not just sitting on a contract meeting and calling yourself a manager. I, I, me personally, my management team, they, they do almost everything for me. And that's why I don't mind paying them good money. I mean, these guys, are they do things in my personal life. For me, they, they, you know, I'm buying and selling houses. I mean, they, they have a hand in almost everything I'm doing. And I, I love taking care of my management team because I feel like they earn the money that I give them. Um, but some of these guys out there, man, they're, they're taking from these guys who aren't even making money. And, uh, and it's just kind of sad. Are, are you finding, as you get older, I mean, you, you've been there, you've done it all, you've fought everyone. Are you finding a lot of fighters are coming to you for advice these days, and are you enjoying that role? It's amazing. You've grown up in front of our eyes, John. Are, 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 you, are you enjoying this sort of veteran leader role these days? Um, it's, you know, I, I, feel like, uh, I feel like a lot of fighters, especially my own team, they do look to me for wisdom and advice and and uh, I have been around the game for a long time. I've experienced almost everything there is to experience in this sport, and um, and I and I do be I do appreciate being able to give back to these guys because ultimately, I think uh, that's what really creates a healthy legacy. You know, everyone um, is fascinated by a person who doesn't lose, um, but but uh, but what really matters is lives that you change along the way. And so, I am trying to you know do my part. I uh, hear there just to get back to the guys who could use it. Uh, so you're fighting a young man named Tiago Santos. He's won four in a row, three in a row at light heavyweight. He hits very hard. He's an intimidating fellow. Is there anything that he does as far as his actual, you know, skill set that concerns you? Are you worried about him? No, I'm not worried about him at all. You know, I feel like I feel like I feel like my fiance is strong enough to knock me out if I put my hands behind my back, right, and let her punch me right in the chin. A lot of a lot of people hit hard. Everybody has the power to knock out anybody. You know, my manager can knock me out if I let him punch me in the face. Um, it's about being smart enough to land that punch. And so I'm not I'm not worried about heavy hitters. Everyone hits hard. Um, you know, the the, the the fighters that concern me the most are the most the intelligent fighters. You know, the guys who can set up those punches or set up solid game plan. So I'm not too worried about Thiago. I've fought many guys with, with big muscles and, and big knockout powers. I've been doing that since I was, you know, one of the youngest guys in the division. I started doing that at 23 years old. So now I'm not worried about anything. I just got to go out there, have faith in my abilities and, and my, my team that's around me, and my intelligence towards the game, and everything else will fall into place. Has he made this personal between you two? He, he's taken some shots at you, and I saw you, you kind of respond uh, via social media. Do you feel like he crossed the line? Um, No. You know, it's like... If you can't insult, you know, my game, you know, people try to insult my personal life. That's something that they all do, you know, and I just got to be cool with it. You know, I think what he said, my legacy would be one of steroids or something like that. It's, it's uh, he's setting himself up already for failure. You know, if, if I lose, it's because John's a cheater. <laughs> it's the story of my life.
So here we are, less than two weeks away. So far, no drama, right? We're good. So far, it's been no drama. Yeah, everything's been going smooth, man. My training camp's been going great, Ariel. Um, everyone on the team is working so hard. I've, I've never had the team get behind a card the way they've gotten behind myself, Holly, and Diego. I mean, all the amateurs, all the pros, everyone's just doing whatever they can do to, to make us better and to kind of serve us. And uh, and it, it's great, man. The team unity is is through the roof. I'm so grateful to fight under the Jackson Week banner. Does it feel Perfect weird? Team. Like that everything's just going smooth. Like, are you almost like waiting for something to happen? Like it's no, so calm. No, no, um, no, it doesn't feel weird. It feels good, man. Uh, you know, everybody's doing the right things. Uh, you know, staying out of trouble, staying in the gym. Um, everybody, I'm just trying to do all the right things. The team's trying to do right by us, and it feels right. You know, to to have no chaos and no controversy. It, it, it feels really good. Now I just gotta. I just got to seal the deal by getting this big win on the sixth. Um, last time you were on the show, you were in studio, and I think you kind of raised some eyebrows with your honesty, saying that, look, I, I am probably going to mess up. I do drink. I'm not perfect. How has, right. since we last spoke, do you feel like, you know, you're, you're, you're still st staying on the straight and narrow? Do you feel like you're... Oh, you're, yeah, man. Yeah, you're happy? Going, yeah, I'm a happy man, Ariel. Things are going... Everything, everything's going really well for me in my life, man. Like, kids are doing great in school, man. Great, great hearted little girls. Um, yeah, home life is, is good, man. The business, business are great. Sponsors coming back, man. Just blessings and money is just pouring into my life. Everything's still going so good right now, man. I, I really can't complain. You know, I'm doing the right things. Um, fighting often, you know, trying to keep the fans happy. Honestly, every, everything's just going really good, man. It's a testament to just you know, God's love, man, and grace. It feel okay. So this is a big fight, obviously, and it's on a big card. But it feels like we're on the cusp of some really big fights coming your way, if all goes well on July six. Perhaps Luke Rockhold, who's also fighting on the card at two o five. Uh, Chris Weidman is making his light heavyweight debut sooner rather than later. And of course, there's the DC fight that everyone always talks about. Do you feel the same way? And if so, do you feel like one's a front runner as far as who would be next after Tiago for you? Mm, I feel like I feel like you know. What do you mean? What do you mean? One's a front runner, like, like one's got to be up next. Do you Sorry. have a gut feeling as to you know who's the big fight the after fight. this one? Because I feel like there's a big fight waiting for you after this one. The, the UFC has made whispers about possible Luke being uh, next, but for me, I don't really care who's next. My job is to be able to beat literally anyone in my division, and, uh, and that's the journey that I'm on. I've always accepted the, the toughest guy. I've been fighting the toughest guy since I was 23 years old. You know, so. That fast lane is my lane. You know, the, t the tough fights is what I do. And uh, whoever it may be, dude, I'll be ready to, to step my game up to, to do what I always do. What was your reaction when you heard DC say on the show last month that, you know, he is considering dropping down to 205 after this fight to fight you one last time? He won't do it. Why not? He won't do it. Uh, I just think, I think it takes a lot out of him to make that weight cut. I haven't seen him in person, but I hear that he's bigger than ever. And uh, to lose all that weight and to come up short a third time, it just takes a lot of courage, I would imagine. I don't think he has the balls to do it. I think he knows what to say to the people to to to, uh, to appear not afraid of me. But I, I think deep down inside, you know, he knows what it's like after losing to me twice, going home, crying, and all this I just doubt he's going to do that to himself again. Do you think his last fight is in August? I don't know. I don't really care what Daniel Cormier does, honestly. Okay, you're done with him. I've, I've been done with him, yeah. Daniel Cormier is not my toughest opponent. I said Gustafson was my toughest opponent. He's not this rival that the world wants him to be to me. He's a guy that I beat twice. Were you surprised that Gustafson retired? Yeah, it was, just, it was surprising, yes, man. I... Uh, I feel bad because I feel like he has so much more fight left in him. I feel like he beats 80% of the division, maybe 85% of the division. I'm hoping that it's just a little mental thing he's going through and that he's going to get over it and come back because him being out of the game is doing the sport disjustice. I mean, he's a, he's a he's great for his area of the world that he represents. And, I mean, he just he's exciting. He's long. He brings that boxing and footwork to the game. And like I said, there's a lot of guys that he still beats. So I'd imagine he's going to kind of 
get back on his feet, brush himself off, and, and come back. Now, the one I'm dying to ask you about, and I'm, I'm sure you knew this one was coming, the last style bender, Israel Adesanya. What is going on here between you and Israel Adesanya, John? This is uh, entertaining stuff. You, you talked about him. He talked about you. You show up in the comments. For, this is, this is, I have to say, you got everyone talking right after his fight back in April. What, do you have an issue with Israel Adesanya? I, I really don't. I really don't. Um, I think the worst thing I ever said about the kid was uh, that he's looking promising, and I would assume that, you know, people are going to start entertaining that fight soon, and he'll come up and challenge me. That's all I said about him. And, and I think he said something about killing one goat in Anderson Silva and now trying to kill me or some shit like that. And the biggest difference is that I'm 31 years old, and I feel like I am still reaching my prime. Um, if you look back, if you look back, throughout a lot of my fights, you know, you hear guys who spot me and say, John is a lot stronger than he looks. And uh, Israel is light in the ass. He's light. <laughs> He's skinny. He's skinny. I put my hands on him and teach him a whole different world of hurt. He's, for him to be so, so frail and to not have a ground game, it's like, bro, you don't want to do it. And then to, uh, and then to talk about my stand-up, against Anthony Smith with his face all bubbled up against a, a short wrestler that, that just did that to him. It was just hilarious. I, I barely get touched in my fight. Um, and so for Israel to talk about his striking skills being so much farther ahead than mine, it's, it's hilarious. Um, just to sum up what I think about him, I think he's a little too light in the ass. He needs to eat some more jerk chicken and come holler at me. He said, your time will come when I say so. Do you feel at some point yeah. you guys will fight? Let me, tell you what, let me tell you what that means. I'm a bitch. I can't beat John. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, him, him fighting me when he's, when he's ready to really beat me, it's like, dude, don't open your mouth if you can't feel like you can't beat me right now. I would never say that about anyone. Like, Oh, I'm not ready to beat him yet. I'm going to come back when I'm good enough to beat him. As if my skills are stagnant and I'm not improving myself. It's silly. What he basically said, and he just worded it how he wanted to, was I cannot beat John. Anything else he said outside of that doesn't matter. Do you feel like at some point your your pass will cross or you're not confident of he, that? He knows where I'll be. Hmm. And that will probably be at 205, right? You're not You're not thinking of heavyweight these days. I am. I am thinking of heavyweight, Ariel. Um, it's just like not in the forefront. Like I'm making weight just fine. You know, people, a lot of people always you know, assume that I'm like a lot bigger than I am, but I'm, I'm a light heavyweight, man. I'm a full, full size light heavyweight who's starting to grow into this grown man strength, man. I feel like I'm getting stronger and more wise in my division. And uh, I feel like heavyweight will come like, I don't know. I don't know what I'm waiting for to go up to heavyweight. Things are just going so well where, where I'm at. There's no real reason for me to change anything. Were you disappointed when you heard that Brock wasn't coming back? No, I wasn't. No, I wasn't. There's a lot of big fights at heavyweight uh, with or without Brock Lesnar. What was going on with the whole Stipe thing? It, it looked like uh, you, you kind of put it out there that you were thinking about it, and then this fight got announced. Were you actually ever considering uh, that? Uh, not really. I was just, I was just talking trash. The fans are excited. <laughs> just stirring the pot? <laughs> just stirring the pot, man. I respect that. At the it. end of the day, yeah, sometimes, you know, the fans want to see some drama. They want to hear some drama. They want to hear you call out people. It keeps it keeps them excited, and ultimately, it's it's about them. And so sometimes you just throw out a little nonsense to get people talking, keep the people going. Well, along those lines, a perfect segue, because uh, I feel like I'm going down a laundry list here, but we don't often get access to you, John, so, so apologies in advance. But I have to ask, Dylan Dennis, yeah, yeah, yeah. what's going on with Dylan no Dennis? Dude, nothing's going on with him. <laughs> what's happening there? How, how did this even start between you two? You're not even in the same promotion. You're not in the same weight class. By, you're, you're off by two weight classes. What's his issue with you? I, 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 think, I think he knows I'm, I'm the type of guy to, to respond and uh, and it's getting his following up, and so so I think that's what's going on with him. At the end of the day, you know, I don't come out and talk trash about these guys, you know, that just came out of nowhere. I feel like I've been in this sport super relevant for over ten years now. Some guys just like to 
bring up my name because it makes him look cool. Okay. W- would you ever consider grappling him? I wouldn't grapple him, no, but I put my foot in his mouth. Okay. <laughs> All right. Fair enough. Uh, Henry Cejudo calls himself the pound for pound king these days. Does he have a case? He is. He is. He is. Absolutely. Why? Hey, I, I don't know. Because he called himself it. I'll <laughs> give it to him. What about you? I feel like I don't have to, like, I don't have to say these things. Right. That makes sense. I don't have to say these things. Ali called people himself should, the greatest. People should say that for you. So if Henry claims it, then I guess it's his. I wish nothing but the best for him, though. He's a... He's, he's, uh, He's great for the sport, man. He's a fellow Christian brother. And, um, you know, he wants to be the man. And so, you know, I think he's taking a page out of Ali's book by calling himself the man. And, and, it, and it worked for Ali. So let Henry have it as well. Okay, let me ask you I'm one not, more because I know you have to I'm leave. Not I'm, What's not in competition. I'm not in competition with anyone. I feel like a lot of people are in competition with me. Fair enough. Can I ask you one last one, John? You said that you want to be active. How many more times, if all goes well on July 6th, do you want to fight in 2019? Um, I'd like to fight in December and then I'd like to try to pick it up and fight again three times in 2019. In 2020, you mean? Yeah, in 2020, yes. Okay. Thank you so much, John. I appreciate it. Good luck to you. We'll hey, talk to you soon. Me, All right, my man. All man, right. You asked all the good questions. I don't know if anyone has any more left. That's the way it goes, my man. Thank you. Hey, that's why, that's why you, you are who you are. I'll talk to you. All right. There he is. Johnny Bones Jones, the reigning defending UFC light heavyweight champion, had a uh, limited amount of time with him. How about that? We, we went on the whole ride with him, and uh, I think he's doing some media now in L.A. for UFC 239, and our time was up. Hello, everyone. It's Ariel Hawani. I just came here to thank you for watching our ESPN YouTube channel. It's the best. You know what else is the best? The ESPN app. You can get highlights, analysis, all that stuff and more. And if you want premium content and live streaming sports, there's only one place for all of that. It's ESPN Plus.